What do you find yourself as the most, you know, as the biggest thing right now that you need to be doing during this? Uh, wow, that's a good question. Um, I'm a, I would say that personally, I'm a, uh, uh, I think I'm a people person. I'm a face to first, face to face type of person. So the fact that you have to do, as you say, you know, everything by phone or um, Zoom conference calls or what have you, um, that part's that part's a little difficult. Um, not because of the technology, it's because I like to be face to face with people most of the time. Um, and obviously, I'm around the players on a regular basis. So not being able to do that every day is 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 tough. Um, uh, I think I think the other for them is, um, and, and it's and it's part of you know our job as a staff is trying to continue to give them. Um, I don't know if it's opportunities or ideas just to continue to stay fit as they would like to because they did so much work in the off season and and in preseason to get ready for the season. Um, to kind of try to keep that foundation of fitness up, and it's limited at times when you know you don't have. First off, you have to do individual workouts because you know you can't be around people, and, and then two is is where do they do that at? Um, those are probably the more the more difficult things from a from a just an everyday management point of view. Here, Nick Saber, forty one action news, talked about the workouts. We talked to a couple of your players and said. Hey, you know, we're still in shape and, you know, they're doing a lot of cardio stuff, but I imagine there's a lot lost not being able to do to be to be to just five v five and your team stuff. Um what what is the difference in in, in shape and in game shape and this all does get back to you know, going to anticipate a couple weeks leading up for ramp up to the season or just kind of getting right back into it. Well, I, I, I think that, you know, um, right now the priority for the players is to try to just keep their foundation of the fitness that they do have. It, it, they're not going to stay game fit. There's just no way. They have to play games. So that's that's not going to happen. But it's really not losing um, the foundation of fitness, the fitness that they built up in the, in the like I said, in the offseason and the preseason. Um in regards to return, obviously a lot is going to depend on when we do return. Um, but I believe that there's probably going to be a, a mini preseason, maybe three or four weeks of, of uh, training prior to um, the opening game that we play. So, um, you know, do I think that's enough time? I think a lot of it is going to have to do with you know, the, the, the level of general fitness the guys can keep in their tank. Uh, it's going to come down to that. Um, but I think that all of us will, and I say all of us, it's not just at sporting, I think it's with the league. I think we'll come to a pretty good informed decision based on when our when our start of season will be or return to season. Hey, Peter, Sean goes with Casey Starr. So, the guys have individual fitness programs, are they choosing the kind of, you know, fitness activities they do, or is it very closely monitored by you guys down the third of the Well, we're, we're, so our, um, I'm in constant contact with our sports science department. They're, they're in constant contact every day with the players. And so they're doing, they're doing all kinds of stuff. I mean, they're doing actually, they're doing Zoom workouts. Uh, they're using Zoom and they're doing uh, workouts with individual, like, like small groups of guys so that they still have interaction with each other because obviously they play a team sport. They don't play an individual sport. And that camaraderie is still something that is, uh, you know, we're trying to keep with the players. And then also for the players that are the farm players, you know, they're here um, and they're, they're trying to even, you know, uh, maybe at times have a little bit more of a difficulty with it. So keeping that connection with some of the other players is a good thing. And so we're doing that. But, yeah, I would say it's very closely monitored by us. Now, obviously, we're, pro we're providing with programming for them um, on, a, on a daily basis. If they choose to do some things um, in addition to what we've, we've asked, that's okay as well. 
um, that that's totally up to them and what what they actually can do, and then also what kind of equipment um, they have available to them also to be able to do certain types of workout. Uh, you mentioned that a couple of weeks before the season does kick back up. It'll look like a, a mini preseason, a couple of games. Will the intensity be the same, or do you not want to wear them out because you've already kind of went through that preseason training program? Do you mean when we come back from from yeah. from all this? You mean yeah. Well, I I think for sure you're going to have to. You, it's going to be a mini preseason, uh, however you look at it. And we're going to have to play some, 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 you know, whatever you want to call them, air squad scrimmages or what have you to start getting ready for not even spit on the field. Um, but what we're doing is we're just, we're just working on some different models depending on how many weeks we have prior to that, that, uh, first game we're going to play. And, and then we'll just, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll build our, whatever you want to call it, preseason accordingly based on when that game's going to be. Okay, class. What some of those models are? Just you know, I guess what you mean by models. Well, if 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 the, if the league says that we have four weeks prior to our first game, or if they say three weeks or five weeks, then we're going to build our model based our, our model of that mini preseason based on when that re, that return match is, um, because we'll have to build our guys up from a physical perspective, um, and that's going to be. You know, that's going to be the main priority is the physical. Um, I think everybody is going to try to work towards being, you know, sharp and all those other things from a soccer perspective. But I think the first priority is the fitness because you just want to make sure that, you know, the guys are, uh, when they return, that they're not in a position to uh, get injured. So that that's going to be the main priority starting out. Hey, Peter, it's kind of with... Azteca TV in Arkansas. Two, two questions. At the end of the day, the business. Uh, how 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 Sporting KC, uh, even if you have contemplated this, uh, are they going to? Are the players are going to keep uh, receiving their monthly salaries? That's my first question. And the second one. As far as the academy, academy goes, you know, with the younger players, how are you keeping those guys uh, in shape uh, and trying to uh, uh, get them ready when they get back? So the first question is, is not one for me to answer because I'm not involved in those conversations. That's a league and, and player union conversation. So I, I just don't have any context for you there because I'm just not involved in any of those conversations. I don't even know if any of those conversations have been had. Um, in, in regards to your second conversation, um, our 19s, 17s, and 15s, um, we are doing something similar. We're providing them with some individual stuff that they can do on their own um, at their homes. The 14s, 13s, and 12s were a little uh, uh, less formalized there because um, at that at those age groups, conditioning and those types of things are not the priority. It's more of the individual technical and tactical aspects of those players. So for those kids, it, it's more of ball work and things like that. Um, I, I, to be honest with you, I think it's probably going to be a lot uh, more difficult to get their season in um, just because they're ending here in the early part of the summer. Possibly there might be playoffs. I don't know. Um, but that's still something that's uh, governed and, and a lot of those decisions are made by U.S. soccer because they run the Development Academy League for our academy kids. Um, but those are the things that we're doing internally with, with those two separate groups because I we, we separate the, the 19, 17, and 15 in one group and the 14, 13, and 12 in another. How the players are taking uh, these adjustments and especially more specifically uh, how Alan Pulido is, is adjusting to all of this well I, I think for all the players it's 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 pretty much the same right they all want to play uh, I, I don't think one player is different than another and that they all want to be doing what they're you know what they're passionate they want to they love the game they want to play and so I, I just think that the, the, the individual um, uh, hurdles for each player are, are more based on 
you know, do they live in an apartment? Do they live in a house? Do they have access to, you know, uh, a field or whatever or something to go and do some of their workouts in? Because obviously the other difficulty is the weather is getting very nice now. And I just think a lot of players want to be doing some things outside. Um, and they still got to be able to do it in a, in, a, in a very responsible manner, social distancing and things like that. And you got to remember, all these guys are famous. So if they go out onto the street, you know, I don't know. If somebody wants to take a picture with them, if they're in a the park, and somebody recognizes them. Those are all things that have to be considered when they're doing this. So I think for all of this, it's, it's not just, you know, what they want to do. It's how can they do it in, in, in a safe, responsible environment. And last question, how Peter Ramirez is staying fit? Uh, I, I, I think, unfortunately, for my wife, um, trying to do two workouts a day, um, and I've, I've now recruited her because uh, just because we need to pick something to her today. So she's probably one that's more angry than I am. Peter! <laughs> Hey, go ahead. I'll go after whoever that was. Sorry. Yes, yes, doctor. Um, where is, uh, did all the players stay in the general Kansas City area, or did some of them spread around the country or even return to their home country? Say, say that one more time. Sorry, I missed the first part of your question. Did most of the players stay in the general Kansas City area where they lived during the season, or did some of them spread out, go to their homes, uh, whether it's in the United States or out? No, the, 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 the players are off here in Kansas City. Um, the only player for us that has uh, returned home is, is uh, uh, Busio, who's a, a minor. He's 17 years old, and, and his, his family requested um, the opportunity for him to go home. But the fact that he could drive um, was a big part of that, um, and that he's the only one. Every other player is still here in town. Peter, this is Karen again. Um, when you started off the season so well, seven goals with two games, and you saw how all the pieces were working, has this given you a lot of time when you do go back to rework strategies, see what was working, kind of be more creative, come up with stuff that you never thought you would come up with before because you have so much time to think about it? Um. I wouldn't say that, um, you know, uh, come up with something, you know, just completely different. I would say that there's this time has uh, given me the opportunity and the rest of the staff to think about probably having to be a little bit more creative back on the return to play because I envision that when we return, I don't think it's going to be, all right, let's just go out. Hey, you know what? Uh, everybody's allowed to go back to the fields and just start going love the 11. I think there's probably going to be uh, a staggered way in which we probably do this. It'll probably be where we'll do individual workouts and then it might work to small groups and then it'll eventually maybe grow um, into where we're just back to normal 11 v 11. So I, I think we're having to be a little creative around that. And that was part of that modeling that I was talking about. I think that right now we're looking at every, um, way in which we would kind of progress to eventually getting back to our normal environment. And so we got to start with just individual workouts. And in those areas, it's where we're going to have to be really creative. Um, and I think we're, we're using we're using that time to do that now. Hey, Peter. Uh, Tom Boger from MLSsoccer.com. Um, I was just kind of wondering what general takeaways you had from your team after the, the hot start in the first two weeks. Um, look, I, I think that um, probably the number one thing for me was that uh, physically we were at a really good place, um, and I thought that in both games we 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 physically dominated uh, both games. Um, that was good. I thought that you know, look, it it, it, it obviously it, it's an obvious one, right? The fact that uh, Allen and, and Gotti Kinda both scored in the first two games is. Is obviously uh, uh, excellent, right? And, and the I, I think that interpretation there for us was more that credit to the team and the staff for helping those guys indoctrinate into the team quickly. The players, from a social perspective, um, staff helping those guys get indoctrinated from a model of play, and then 
Um, you know, I, 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 I would say for, for those guys and also Puncic, when you look at uh, Kyrie Shelton, the work ethic that those guys are putting into to the team, both uh, off the ball as well, I, I think is a, is a is a big positive, um, and I think that's going to be the challenge for us in the return is making sure that we can get back to um, a high level of, of uh, you know physical fitness um, because it's hard to play this game without it, um, and with this time off and the individual training is going to be probably the biggest challenge returning. How do you guys regain that momentum that, that you had on the field while having to restart from scratch again, kind of? Again, hopefully that the guys are able to and, and uh, to stay with some type of uh, high level of at least a uh, foundation of the current fitness that they have, and then that um, we're able to use the time that we have prior to um, that return match. Um, we use it in a really efficient manner that we're able to get the guys um, into a, a, a uh, you know, dominating physical uh, ability. Uh, Peter, a uh, quick question. I apologize if you covered this just as I'm, there's another teleconference going on. Can you, can you tell me uh, if the league has given you any direction as to whether or not when you come back, they will allow clubs that are maybe in a less, um, lack of a better term, hot environment to come back and practice? Or will they wait until all the teams can come back? And and, and so you got to get the all clear from clear across the country as opposed to being able to come back based upon when your area is clear. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, it's something that we've been we have been talking about. Um, I actually provided the league with uh, our, our staff. We all put together a a sort of a protocol of just what individuals individual workouts would look like. Um, basically providing field access, things like that. Um, it, as you say, in areas that aren't as restricted as others, um, even provided a video with an electronic diagram as well. And it's something that they're reviewing, I have to say. Um, we don't have any, any uh, determination yet from them what that looks like. And to your, and to your real point, that is whether or not that's going to have to you know, everybody's going to have to participate um, in that and be able to be, you know, in that space uh, in the country where, you know, everybody gets the okay to go ahead and do it. We, have, we haven't gotten that um, feeling yet, but it, it, it is something that we've asked and we're just waiting for uh, uh, a response. Hey, Peter, is there any uh, like talk within the league of just looking at what other leagues have been doing, like how the NBA, NHL, and MLB are handling this, and how is that uh, being used to influence your plans? Well, I think first at first, um, our league is, is, is obviously staying in communication with the rest of the leagues just in our country. At the same time, I think they're also following what some of the leagues are doing um, you know, around the world. I, I think most of the time it, it has a lot to do with where they are in, in this um, pandemic and, 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 you know, where, where their, what their area looks like. I, I, I think what's difficult is, is, and I, I've made this, uh, uh, I've given my opinion on this. I think it's hard to compare our players to basketball players. Um, you know, look, the, the compensation is different. Basketball players, almost all of them have, you know, a weight room in their house. They almost all have a basketball court in their backyard. Um, a lot of them have their own individual uh, trainer, so they can they can do workouts to stay fit in a much different way. You know, uh, our players have a you know soccer field is seventy five yards wide and one hundred twenty yards long. Most guys don't that have that in their backyard, um, and most guys don't have a weight room. So, a lot of things that we've had to do just here in Kansas City, we've had to. Um, We've had to uh, deliver equipment to players and um, those types of things to their houses so that they have the ability to do a lot of these things um, on their own or in their in their houses because they don't have any. you got to remember also we have a lot of farm players that are in our league as well, and they're, a lot of them are in apartments um, the whole time they're here. Some go into apartments in the first quarter that they're here and then they're looking for a home. So there's just there's, there's, there's a lot of – transient type environment for the players and so 
it, it's much more difficult um, in, in how they get prepared and, and, and what they do. So uh, it, it's hard to look at the other sports just because I think that we're kind of in a place on, on our own. And although I do think the teams have been very creative in trying to figure out how to manage that. Hey, Peter, Sean again. Once you guys do return to play, do you have any ideas or preferences how you'd like the league to be structured, whether that's a full regular season, a short off-season, or you know, condensed regular season? What would you like to see? You mean as far as when we return? Yeah. Well, I, 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 it's, again, it, so much of this depends on when we return. I mean, I think every everybody would say that they would love to see that uh, we would love to see um, us play all the games. Um, if that means that we have to play, you know, uh, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, something like that, then I think for, for most of us, I think we say we would do it just because um, we want to try to uphold the, the integrity of the competition as best as we can. But I think it's all going to depend on when we return. I, Any final question? I think you also have to take into consideration that a year ago, um, when we went into the new format of our league and then of our playoffs, there was a whole month saved on the back end. So I, I, the league right now has that available to them to, you know, we, we could see us, you know, you could see us playing the, the, the MLS Cup again in December um, in this situation. I would think that the sanctity of the the format for playoffs from last year would be kept in place, but um, there, there still is there's still a lot of time to work with, um, and I don't think anything's off the table at the moment. Any final questions, Mr. Vermees? Yes, it's Hewlett from uh, Innovation Kansas City's and. In this unconventional time for everybody, what would you say the competitive advantage of Sporting Kansas City versus other clubs during this challenge of conditioning the players and preparing them for the own up? Zero. I think we're all in the same boat. We're all stay at home. Uh, I think it's going to come down to. Uh, I think it's going to come down to a couple of things. I think one is what individual players have access to. Um, and, and, and how much uh, or, or, or how close they can stay to a good level of general fitness over, over, over the time that we are um, at this, this, this moratorium from training. And so, you know, the, the next step is going to be for the staff to, you know, come up with um, that plan for when we do return to play, um, how much time we have prior to that game, and then, you know, we're testing and figuring out where our players are at that moment when they first come back to us. And then, you know, how, you know, what kind of plan we put together to try to get them back to a, a, a level of fitness that first and foremost ensures that we're not going to put them in, in danger of injury. Um, and then hopefully it, it starts to, uh, that, that fitness plan, that level of fitness that they get, um, is able to sustain the kind of play and the intensity of how we want to play um, on the field. All right, thank you.